I'm here at Sacred Heart Cathedral in Bendigo today and I'm going to demonstrate the fantastic pipe organ in this cathedral and hopefully introduce you to and demystify this incredible instrument. The pipe organ is one of the oldest instruments in music history and it is also the grandest but there are a lot of mysteries surrounding it and I hopefully will um, explain some of them for you today so that you may have an understanding how the organ works. So we just come through here and we'll go through one of the organ chambers to get to the console first. Now you can see in here that uh, we've got a big um, when we got a big blower in here and basically that supplies wind for the instrument and as you can see there's a lot of uh, wind trunking you know made out of big wooden pipes and that, that basically takes the air to these bellows which regulate air pressure and provide the air to the rest of the instrument. Um, as you can see in here there are some very big pipes and if you have a look around here just inside the door this is one of the largest pipes on the instrument and produces a frequency of about 16 hertz. You feel it more than you really hear it, but it is absolutely fantastic on a large organ. And you can see at the top of the pipe, they've actually had to double it back down because there's not enough room in here. And these are typically 32 feet in length, these large pipes. And you can see all the other pipes in here as well. If you come through here, This is just a good little example. Um, if you have a look at the texture on the pipes here, it's called spotted metal. Traditionally it's made of about 50% lead, 50% tin, and when it's melted it produces this natural sort of spotted effect. And, um, but pipes can be made from wood or different um, metals, so you can get all sorts of different sound um, qualities out of the different types of pipes. But in an instrument like this one, most of the pipe work is up further above. And if you come back a little bit further, um, you can't see much from here, but a lot of the pipes are up in the top of the instrument, up in there and over there. Now if we come out here, this is where the console is. And you can see that the view out here is absolutely magnificent. Come here and have a look at the. Uh, this is the console from where the instrument is played. Um, there are other large chambers um, of pipes on the other side here. Um, and again, not just the pipes that you can see will make sounds, in fact, sometimes they don't, but a lot of what you really hear is hidden behind there. So, what we have here is the console of the organ from where you play it and basically um, organs can be very small in size you might have one keyboard or manual as we call them or you might have four manuals or even as many as five or six on some very large instruments <coughs> um, and so no two organs are really the same but what you will find is that they are they're all different, they've built, been built at different times in history and they've got different sorts of quality to them and certain sorts of music are more well adapted for certain instruments. But nonetheless, with a large instrument like this one, it's very adaptive and you can play almost anything on it. So basically, here's how the organ works. We've got all these knobs on the side here, um, which we call stops. And so if I pull out one um, here, middle C is here, like on a piano. But with the organ, basically you have, for each stop, you have one pipe for every note. So for every different note I'm playing now, there's a different pipe that produces each pitch. And that's why there's so many pipes on a pipe organ. Now, you can get all sorts of different qualities of um, sound. For example, if you have a look here, I can pull out one that says Clarabella on it. That's more of a flute-like sound, and you get a very lovely sort of sound. Or 
One of my favourite flutes is the doppel flute and this has a very airy sort of sound. Absolutely exquisite. Um, you can also have some more string-like sounds and these are pipes that are of a more narrow scale and so you can hear um, what that can produce and then you've also got what are called reeds and these have reeds inside the pipe that vibrate and produce the sound. Some of them are meant to um, imitate orchestral instruments, other ones less so. For example over here you've got a clarinet an oboe or we could have um, a cornopian which is more of a horn like sound and or even you know a trumpet like sound so you can get all sorts of sounds. But one of the um, stops that gives the organ its characteristic sound are these ones that are called diapasons. And basically, if I pull, you know, out, you know, a couple of these diapasons, just the ones with the eights on them, um, you can hear that sound. It's very smooth, very rounded. But now the one with the eight on it, this is, this is middle C right down here where I'm playing. But if I pull out a stop with a four on it and press that same note, yep, and I press the same note, it's an octave higher. And if I pull out one with a two on it, the 15th there, um, again, another octave higher. And so basically, what gives the organ its sound is how you can combine these stops at different pitches and it fills in the harmonics of the sound to give a very rich and full sound. And um, so if I pull on the eights at the moment and I play this chord, now with a four foot added, now with a two foot stop added, and then with the special stop that's a mixture that has multiple pipes at different harmonics, very typical sort of sound. Now the range of the organ is immense. Um, some of the lowest notes you will get are produced by those big pipes that I showed you earlier um, and they produce very very low tones. Now, now these ones I can play with my feet on the pedals and um, you can see as I come down, I don't know if the camera will be able to capture the uh, sound as I go down, but... Let's try that again. Here we go. I'm not sure if you can hear these, but it keeps getting deeper. And so, I don't know if you could hear that bottom one. There's another 32 foot, which is a reed. And again, the bottom note, this will be a bit more audible, but it comes across um, sounding like this. Now, on its own, it's not particularly musical, but you will find that um, when you build up the whole sound, you get quite a fantastic result. Um, again, some of the highest pitches you can produce. Um, and I don't know whether that will be picked up on the camera. So you can um, have a vast sort of um, array of sounds. Now, one thing that you'll notice is that the stops are divided into different divisions. Um, you've got what's called the great manual, which is this one. You've got the choir over here, which is down on the bottom. The swell, which is up here. The solo, which is up the top. And the pedal's self-explanatory. 
Now one of the reasons for dividing stops up is because you can combine diff well you can put different sounds against each other. So if I pull out you know some of these um, sounds here um, and some of the stops on the choir, what I can do is this. But sometimes you want to combine more of the stops together. There might be, you know, um, and this is worth saying while I think about it. Up here you've got this string-like sound on the grade, and you've then got another stop here which is called a Celeste. And this is particularly special because it's specifically um, tuned off pitch. And when you add it in, have a listen. And it, and it gives a sort of wavering sort of effect. So let's say I like that, but I want to combine that with one of the flutes on the great manual. Let's say the clarabella. Well, down here I've got what I call couplers. This one says swell to great, and if I pull that out, I can then play the stops that are pulled out on the swell on the great at the same time. So if I if I add it in now. And this can be very useful when you want to achieve certain special effects or really build up the quality of the instrument. Um, now, once you've built up the sound and you've got, you know, a lot of stops pulled out, especially with the diapasons, sometimes we will add the reeds that are up here and that will give an even grander sound to the instrument overall. So, if I give an example, um, without the reeds, and now if I add in the reeds, and I'll add them all, all of them, you don't have to add all of them, that'll give you an idea of what the organ can produce here. majestic sort of sound. Now you'll notice there's a lot of buttons which we call pistons underneath the manuals here and sometimes when you're playing complex music you need to change the sound very quickly and these can be programmed so if I am so let's say I've got you know uh, the sound that I'm playing with here and all of a sudden I need to change it you know, I can be playing along, I can hit one of these pistons and it will change the stops as you will see. And likewise, I have pistons down here for my toes which can be used. Now you'll also notice there's two pedals down here and they can control what are called swell boxes and basically inside the instrument the choir division's in one of these swell boxes and the swell division is very appropriately in a swell box and what the swell boxes have is louvre like wooden shutters on the front which can be opened and shut with these pedals down here which will change both the quality but more specifically the volume of the sound. So if I close the pedal here and I start playing, you will notice how the sound changes while I'm playing. Um, so have a listen.
that can allow you to achieve all sorts of effects. So basically, that is the organ in a nutshell. But the one other thing that is very well worth demonstrating here is also, just for interest's sake, is the volume range that can be achieved. The quietest sorts of sounds you're going to achieve will be something like this, and I don't know whether the camera will pick it up. box closed with that stop on so you can get very quiet sounds or alternatively you can have much larger sounds and this can be quite exciting and, um, and one of the uh, special stops are what we call the tubers. They are very high pressure reeds and very majestic when you use them and they're just inside the facade up the top there. But, so this will give you an idea of the volume the organ can achieve. So that hopefully demystifies the organ a little bit for you and um, I hope that you enjoyed this video.